Uh, okay, next up on News Talk Lunchtime, let's talk about autism because an article printed last Friday caused uproar amongst parents, so much so that the author had to offer a clarification in the newspaper. Dr. Tony Humphreys is a consultant clinical psychologist. He writes a regular column for the Irish Examiner. In the article, in question, Dr. Humphreys questioned whether there was sufficient research to suggest the condition exists. He also referred to research that found that the children and grandchildren of engineers and mathematicians were more likely to be autistic and suggested that in these cases, uh, scientists should examine the possibility the possibility that the cause of the condition is a lack of love or expressed affection from carers. Lisa Domican, uh, a parent of two autistic kids, uh, contacted us on News Talk. Lisa, good afternoon. Tell us what, what in the article in particular you were unhappy with. Okay, well, this so-called uh, professional in the field of parenting uh, who actually lectures at university, writes books and is published once a week in the feel-good section of the examiner is putting forward a theory that Autism is actually a myth and that the withdrawn, um, lack of development, uncommunicative and perseverative, you know, those rep- repetitive behaviours that we observe in children that is known as, in inverted commas, autism, is actually caused by emotionally withdrawn, unconnected parents. This isn't the first time that this opinion has been expressed, though. I mean, he, he was making reference to, to other works in the article. Yes, he was making reference to them, but he, you know, I mean, you read all the blogs by much smarter people than me, but he was misquoting, and those uh, particular um, books that he was referring to have also been um, highly disputed. Um, so, you know, you're looking at flawed data from very flawed sources, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, two and two don't make five. Tell us about this, uh, this idea that was put forward as part of a discussion, as Tony Humphreys has argued, that the parents are some way responsible for the condition that uh, is referred to as autism. I'm using the convoluted language now from the article and possibly getting it wrong, but that, that's essentially what they were saying, was autism yeah, was a result that, of... That's exactly what it's saying. OK, it's a really old idea called refrigerated mums. And when uh, autism was first being identified and observed, that was the original hypothesis, that these children who were not developing, um, were, you know, withdrawn, they weren't communicating, they had perseverative behaviours. They were, this was happening because their mothers were cold and weren't connecting with them. And the phrase was refrigerator mums. Now, it has since been very discredited. And I mean, um, Dr Louise Gallagher, who is a professor of, of psychiatry at Trinity University, has responded to the article today. And I I can't think of a better authority of someone who understands the neurology. It actually happens in the neurology of our brains that brings autism to be a recognised condition. Now, it is a spectrum. Some people have it in mild versions. It affects some people quite severely, but it is a sensory um, disability. It affects everything that you see, hear, touch, taste, smell, okay. and distorts it. You know, this is just not, not just a theory. L- Lisa, tell us about your two boys. <laughs> I, I actually have a, a little girl and a boy, who well, not so little. Um, my son Liam is 14, and we first realised that things weren't going uh, the way they should when he was uh, between two and two and a half. I have to say I resisted it very strongly. I did not see what was obvious to everybody else because to me he was my perfect beautiful boy. Uh, His sister came along 18 months later and her uh, autism was very very apparent from a very early age. She uh, needed to be held and squashed and squeezed pretty much from birth and she is still like that 12 years later and that is because of a sensory need in her body that she can't feel where she is in space unless she's being held quite tightly. And that's how she's most um, secure. Neither of them developed speech. That was the first warning sign. But with my son, at the age of three and a half, I started using pictures to prompt him to communicate. So if he handed me a picture of a drink, I would give him a drink. And I would say, drink. And he very quickly learned to copy me because he had the two sources of information, the picture and the sound. I did the same thing with Grace. She did not learn so quickly to make the sound. Excuse me. So for about six years, we were using pictures to communicate. Now, this is a recognised system called PECS. It was developed by people with a long experience of psychology and speech therapy, and it is a way of prompting communication 
that then reduces frustration behaviour. So, so that, really that, that to me doesn't sound like refrigerator mum. That sounds like someone who was doing absolutely everything within their power to help their children. And ironically, Jonathan, the, the thing that I learned very early in doing those courses where I learned to do this was that my overwhelming affection and connection with my children was actually holding them back because I was always trying to read their minds and get them things before they even had to try and ask for it. They weren't learning to communicate in a general way. And when you go and do these courses, they teach you to try not to mind read, to pretend you don't understand, which then pushes the child to take an extra step, to hand you a picture. And that means that, you know, if, if, if someone is, is coming to the house who doesn't know them that well, they can communicate with them. So that emotional bond can actually hold your kids back. I mean, I, maybe I failed as a mother because I didn't do controlled crying because I picked my child up and held her every time she cried. If I was a little bit more disconnected, maybe she would have learnt to sleep settle. Um, but that didn't happen because I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Now, we did ask Dr Tony Humphreys to come on the programme today. Uh, he, he wasn't available to do that. The offer for him to come on still stands. But uh, he was writing in the Irish Examiner in defence of that original article that appeared last Friday. He said, we accept autism diagnoses as fact, but we must be open to different perspectives. What he was trying to do from what he has written is trying to open a debate on whether or not people are diagnosed and children are diagnosed with autism too readily. Is there, is there at least some merit in that argument? No, I, I did a quick straw poll amongst my friends, and I'm part of a, you know, a worldwide autism community uh, through the internet. No one had to wait less than 12 months, and the person who only waited 12 months actually had to go over the head of their public health nurse, who would not assess the child because the child wouldn't answer their questions. The child was nonverbal. So it is, a, it is a struggle, first of all, with yourself. I refused to see it. My husband had to convince me to go and get the referral. And then a struggle with elderly doctors, inexperienced public health nurses. I mean, there are a lot of good people out there who are very aware of autism, but it can be hard to find them and then to go through the process of diagnosis. Now, we're part of the Trinity study into genetics. Mm. And as part of that, um, the, the Trinity professor and the nurse took our blood. She got us to do extensive psychological tests, and that's myself, my husband, and my son, Liam, as well as taking the uh, biological samples. They also filmed Liam at a very early age. We went into James's hospital. So if anybody was wanted to dispute whether he actually had autism at the end of this study, they have what is now 10 years of proof mm. that this child has very obvious autistic symptoms and also has a psychological record which supports that. We're speaking with uh, Lisa Domigan, who's the mother of two children with autism here on News Talk. Lisa, this certainly has sparked a debate, lots of letters being written to the Irish Examiner on the back of the article, but uh, what do you say to the parent now who has give, been given a recent diagnosis of autism for their children? If they read this, um, their, their head must be in a very strange place. Um, I reach out to them and tell them to make a connection with the likes of myself or anybody else that they can who already has a child with autism. Those first two years are really hard. You're going through a grief process. You're very ready to blame yourself. Maybe I didn't spend enough time with them. Maybe I shouldn't have gone back to work. Maybe I shouldn't have let them watch television. Maybe I didn't make them enough organic baby food. You're really, really happy to blame yourself. Unfortunately, there will be very unhelpful relatives who will agree with you and say, yes, it is your fault. So to find yourself on a day where a, a so-called inverted commas professional is saying that, yes, it is actually your fault, makes it ten times harder. And if you can't accept that autism is a neurological condition and you're stuck in that blame cycle, you're not as useful to your child. You're not as ready to go out there and start learning about intervention, which in many cases helps them catch up. So it's actually holding a lot of people back to do this. Yeah. But... It is not the end of the story. It is not. I mean, yes, and my can I just friend, but on the point, and I'm not defending Dr. Tony Humphreys. He's big enough and bold enough to defend himself. He has declined the opportunity to come on the program. But at the same time, we all know in every aspect of medicine, medicine is not an exact science. So therefore, it will progress, and different treatments and different understandings are constantly coming along. So, would you accept perhaps that this is this has been part of the debate which you're, you are now feeding feeding into as a parent, and that other medical professions can take part? Either debunk, prove or work into part of the future research? 
Well, I, I have to go on record here and saying I believe in the science. Maybe that's because I have autistic tendencies myself. But empirical research, double-blind studies, taking one group and, and applying one theory to it and then making sure that it is peer-reviewed and repeated around the world, that's what I'm going on as, as a parent and that's what I'm agreeing with. I know that people very sneakily have these feelings about things. People were very prepared that uh, a Polish immigrant was a doll bludger last week and it turned out that she wasn't but there was a misinterpretation of a letter but there were there was a population there that wanted to send her back that they actually had this feeling that they hadn't expressed until they saw it in print and there are going to be people who think that I'm cute that all the other mums and parents of people with autism are cute and that we're just taking advantage of the situation what we really need to do is just learn to be better parents and and that is what troubles me about this issue but I just think send more love. If you have that love for your family, if you want to share that uh, love and concern and share information and give support to all the people who need it, then we'll just use our own love to overcome this particular issue. Okay, Lisa Domic and mother of two kids. Uh, Lisa, thanks very much for talking to us and explaining your point of view today on Newstalk. You're very welcome and thank you.